There is a famous story about the tortoise and the rabbit. We all know what happened at the end. The tortoise beat the rabbit and won the race. The moral of the story was slow and steady wins the race. But how did the tortoise beat the rabbit if the rabbit is much faster than the tortoise? We'll explain all of that and more in today's video. Hey everyone, I'm Jordan Spivey joined with my dad, Chavis Spivey. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our awesome science videos. Also, scan the QR code in the top left corner of the screen to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. In today's video, we will analyze and interpret data to identify patterns and the relationships between speed and distance. So, so let's, let's do this. Our learning target for today is, I can analyze and interpret data to identify patterns in the relationship between speed and distance. Let's start this topic off with a quick review over some key vocabulary like frame of reference, distance, and speed. Frame of reference is the reference or starting point. It's point from which the object is moving or starting from. For example, your frame of reference will be from home to school. More than likely, you started your morning out at home and was transported to school by bus or other means of transportation. Most of your frames of reference will be different because you all had a different starting point this morning. Our second term is distance, which measures how far it is between two objects and or how far an object has moved. For example, some of you stay 20 miles from school, while others stay 45 miles from school, and some may even stay less than a mile from school. So if you travel 20 miles to get to school, then you have covered a distance of 20 miles to get to school. Distance can be measured in feet, meters, miles, kilometers, inches, yards, and several other terms to measure distance. In science, we commonly use miles, feet, inches, kilometers, meters, centimeters, and millimeters to measure distance. Our third term is speed. Speed is how fast an object moves in a certain amount of time. The formula for speed is speed equals distance divided by time. Let's use this formula in the following example. A car travels 30 miles per hour. In order to find speed, we must identify the distance and divide it by time. The distance the car travels is 35 miles. The time is one hour. We now divide the distance of 35 miles by one hour to get 35 miles per hour. Quick check for understanding. What if the car traveled 55 miles per hour for five hours? What is the car's total distance? What is the car's speed? How far does the car travel each hour? Now let's get into some basics of analyzing speed and distance graphs by analyzing the following graph. The x-axis measures time and the y-axis measures distance. Anytime you see a straight line, it means that the object's speed is constant or going in a uniform motion, which means it does not change. Most vehicles travel in a non-uniform motion because its speed is constantly changing throughout the trip. If it's a straight line going upwards, then the object is moving further and further from its starting place and is covering the same amount of distance for each unit of time. Let's take a look at this graph to see what uniform steady speed looks like. Notice that for every second, the car is gaining speed at 10 meters per second. For the first second, 10 meters per second. At two seconds, 20 meters per second. At three seconds, 30 meters per second. At four seconds, 40 meters per second. And then at five seconds, 50 meters per second. The speed remains constant as shown by the straight line. Just like the car traveling 55 miles per hour in the previous example, that means it is traveling a distance of 55 miles for every hour of time. Notice that the green line is almost vertical, which means an object is traveling at a fast steady speed. Compare the green line with the red line as it's going up. Both have a steady speed, but the green line is faster because the angle of its line is more vertical than the red line. Look at the part of the red line going down. This means it's returning to its starting point and is slowing down at a constant rate. The middle part of the red line is a straight line going across. Anytime you see this, it means that the object is not moving at all. It covers a distance of zero over time. This is the same as someone driving their car to work and their car breaks down. The time is constantly moving, but the car is not traveling any distance at all. Let's look at the blue line which represents that the object is getting faster over time. 
This blue line represents acceleration of an object, which means its velocity is changing over time. This is just like when your parents press the gas to speed past a slower driver or to get on the interstate. This also happens when they quickly press on the brakes to prevent an accident. Be safe out here, wear your seatbelt at all times. Let's analyze the following distance over time graph. Between 9 and 11 a.m., the object traveled a total distance of 30 kilometers and 2 hours further away from the starting point. Between 11 and 2 p.m., the object did not travel any distance and remained at 30 kilometers during this time. We can tell by a straight line going across. Between 12 and 12.30 p.m., the object has fast steady speed as shown by the steep vertical green line going up. It traveled even further away from the starting point during this time as well. From 12.30 to 14 hours military time or 2 p.m. standard time, the object has a steady decrease in speed and came back to its original starting point or frame of reference. Now let's see what you've got. Quick check for understanding. Find the distance and time to calculate the speed for each letter A, B, C, and D. Pause the video and take 5 minutes to think, pair, and share your answers. You've got this. In summary, the relationship between speed and distance is direct. As speed increases, the distance travel also increases. As speed decreases, the distance travel decreases as well. So that brings us back to the beginning of the video. How did the tortoise beat the rabbit if the rabbit is much faster? There can only be one answer. The rabbit started out very fast, but got cocky and arrogant along the way and just knew it had the tortoise beat. Because after all, there is no way that this slow tortoise can beat me, said the rabbit. So what did the rabbit do? It took a super long nap, just knowing that when it woke up, it would still have plenty enough time to beat the tortoise. Notice that the tortoise, on the other hand, had uniform constant speed, never took a break, and kept going and going until the very end. The final result? The tortoise beat the rabbit not because it was the fastest or the quickest, but because it remained true and faithful to its mission. Just like the famous saying goes, the battles of life are not won by the strongest or the fastest, but by those who never give up and endure all the way to the very end. And that's our video for today. Now it's your knowledge to see how proficient you are with analyzing and interpreting data to identify patterns and the relationships between speed and distance by taking our video quiz. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code at the top right of the screen, or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take the quiz. Remember, 80% are higher for proficiency, record your results on your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you, you better, better keep going, going because it's not over until you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon, and also scan this QR code to contact us and explore more about awesome content and material. Peace and have a positive, productive day. day.